What we're looking at here is a price chart of natural gas as well as an implied volatility chart. So whenever we're trading options, we first need to look at the correlation between price and volatility. Because when we're trading options, we're essentially trading both price, actually, which is down here. Uh, the green line is the price. And then we're also trading volatility, which is this red line. And when we look at these two charts, we see that they actually follow each other somewhat. So there's a direct correlation or a positive correlation between my price, which is down here, and the volatility of natural gas. Okay, so when you're trading futures options, it's different than trading, for example, SPX, where SPX has an inverse correlation. And we'll look at SPX in a moment. But right away, when I look at this chart, I can see that the short strangle that James Cordier was doing was actually absolutely the wrong um, trading method for this product because this has a direct correlation of price to volatility. So when you're selling calls on natural gas and natural gas moves up, then your volatility is also increasing. When you're selling calls, you create a negative Vega position and also along with some negative VAMA. So as the volatility was increasing on the trade, as it went towards those naked calls, the position was getting hammered from the negative Vega position and then the the losses accelerated because the volatility kept increasing. And I'm going to bring in a chart from our software to look at this to see the way that the negative Vega interacts with that increasing volatility. We also see that the vols went up from like maybe about 30 to like 110. So you just have, you know, a tremendous increase in the volatility along with that increase in the price. So next let's bring in an interactive chart and analyze this risk a little bit closer. So here I am in my software and I don't have natural gas historical data, not yet. Um, in the future, I'd like to have um, some options on futures. But what I did was I brought in SPX just so we can get an idea of what this you know naked call position would look like. And then I actually added in enough contracts to make a 15% margin about 276 million, which is probably something like I guess he was doing. And when the trader does this, see they're, I call this the bar. So they're starting off with a lot of credit, right? And they're trying to just make this credit. They're hoping that the underlying asset, you know, stays underneath this price here. In SPX, it'd be like 2770. And then they just collect all this credit, which is like $14 million, right? So it's a very aggressive type of trade, you know, putting on any any trade really for like a credit and this much um, negative vega and, and short gamma is really risky and very, very aggressive. Um, why would someone do this? Well, it's because they're not privy, I guess, to, again, these your correlations between price and volatility and maybe they don't have, um, they're not educated on different kinds of strategies that would have profited. For example, the methods that we teach would have just crushed it they would have made a killing during this move. But anyway, back to this. So down here, tremendous amount of theta. Your Vega position is what? Negative 4 million. Okay. Again, we saw that that volatility went up like 80 points. So that almost goes off our chart here. So this is what was happening. So as it's going up this way, because of that price to volatility correlation, the vols are creeping up as the price went up. So you can see it's just totally the wrong strategy for this product. Um, again, I'm using SPX as an example, but if you're looking at natural gas, this is the behavior. So if you do short calls, you go up this way, you have an increase in volatility, and then with this tremendous negative Vega position, you're totally getting crushed. So as he went up this way, you can just see the drawdown so even if he stayed under this price, he still would be experiencing a lot of drawdown as he approached that price. Now, as you put time into it, 
it changes a little bit, right? So it's kind of a race between that volatility crunch that he was experiencing and the drawdown and trying to stay within this range. And unfortunately, he lost the race because the, the price moved too fast this direction. And then again, with that volatility crunch happening at the same time, um, he really just got forced out of the trade. And then in December, the price came back down. So I don't know, theoretically, if he would have actually made a profit. But it's just the wrong design. Totally wrong design. Now, see, when you're trading SPX, the vols typically drop. So you get a totally different scenario. If you're trading a product with an inverse correlation of price and volatility, then as you go this way and your vols, your volatility drops and you have that negative vega, then it's totally different risk profile. So to me, it looks like, you know, maybe James didn't understand price and volatility correlations and he put on absolutely the wrong type of spread. And um, the other thing is trying to hedge this with naked puts like he was doing. Again, when he added the naked puts, he was increasing that negative uh, vega position even more. So then just getting hammered and hammered and then that hedge that he was doing totally didn't work because of the increase in volatility. So it's very possible that increase in volatility was causing a drawdown on the naked puts and the naked calls at the same time. So yeah, just absolutely the wrong strategy to be applying to natural gas. So the lesson to learn from James is really when you're trading anything, um, especially these futures, make sure that you check the price to volatility correlations. Now, in this case, the trade was moving up and he had an increase in volatility. So this would have totally benefited from like a back ratio spread. That could have worked because, again, you have a positive vega as you go up. And anyway, um, very important to study those correlations and make sure you apply the right strategy. So, yeah, this one definitely needed a positive vega type of trade going to the right or going to the upside, and then it would have profited uh, very nicely, but certainly not negative vega and negative ama. So I hope that clears things up and hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you give us a thumbs up down at the bottom. And again, we appreciate all the followers and all the comments and everything. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.